us on 021 446 Now, as mentioned before, we're very delighted to welcome a renowned politician with a strong struggle credential to our Cape Talk studio today on Women's Day. Our guest currently sits as the chairperson of the National Council of Provinces, the deputy head of the ANC Women's League, and earlier this year was appointed as a chancellor of CPUT taking over from Trevor Manuel. And in fact, she's donned many hats. A member of the NEC of the ANC, council member of the Robben Island Museum, premier of the North, Northwest Province, member of Women, Women Waging Peace Policy Commission, and in 1979 became the first woman in South Africa to be jailed for MK activities. She's one tough cookie and a natural leader. And today we get to know um, the woman behind the Honorable Tandi Moody. So welcome to the show. Lovely to have you with us. Thank you, Bonnie. Thanks to the listeners and happy Women's Day to all the great South African women. Awesome. And happy Women's Day to you. Thank you, dear. You look beautiful in that green. <laughs> I'm trying. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're doing very well. Just to start off on that Women's Day note, what does Women's Day mean to you? It's one out of 365 where, you know, we dedicate the day to relook at ourselves as South African women, as South African men to look at whether we have actually done what our foremothers set out to do. Mm. Starting with Krotoa, coming with Charlotte Matleke, Masisulu, Ruth Mombadi, Mashope, are we still on the right track? Are we doing what women set out to do that was emancipation of women, that was ensuring that patriarchy disappears, that was ensuring that the masses, ourselves as the biggest part of that masses, are empowered enough to recognize and play our role within society in the socio, economical and political spheres. So today it's not just about having bribes and having a politician talking mm. about it is it should be a day about gender equality and and in fact we should even go further. Is it uh, the woman, is it the only one that uh, puts on a dress? Or what is the definition of a woman today? So t- today is a day where we really need to do a lot of reflection. Yeah, We are mothers, we are sisters, we are girlfriends, we are wives, we are politicians, we are nurses. Are we happy with the state of affairs? Yeah. Where is that critical voice of women? Poverty, unemployment... Um, the rural development that is still lagging behind. What are South African women saying about the lot of other women? Absolutely. I mean, I was going to get into that a bit later, but since you've hit the nail on the head right away, where where is the voice of of the female leaders? I mean, I just I look, I look at young what young people are saying on social media all the time about everything that's going on in South Africa that's affecting women and children, and lately it's become. It's a, it's a matter of urgency and people on the edge of their seats saying something has to be done or something has to be said or something has to be said in a way that y- unifies everybody into a, in, in a direction of, of hope or a, a, a vision that is cast so that everybody can kind of identify where do I slot in? How can I um, participate in this conversation mm. or in this development? We are not hearing enough from women leaders in this country and why i think we've got too many issues you you've got um racism rearing its back again and you do need a critical voice that should be coming from women across the uh, color bar to say it's not in our name it's not in our children's name you've got this increasing incidence of partners killing their mm. partners. Mm. And and we, we can't only, only go and speak at funerals. So you do need to resuscitate strong, apolitical, or non-political, if you choose the word, strong structures of women who can stand up and say it is enough. The lone voice of a politician now and then gets drowned out Mm -hmm. and and let's face it the more women stand up as individuals 
the more they get drowned out, the more they are demonized. And therefore, you have a full mm -hmm. circle of perhaps because of the economic situation in the world, again, all the negatives within our society is coming back. And who always gets to be the victim? It is the aged, it is the disabled, it is the woman, it is the child. So we need to really take a stand as South African women yeah. and say, it's not done in our name. It's not done on our bodies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. So I know whenever people meet politicians, they just want to nail them <laughs> and they want to hit issues really hard but today we also want to get to know the woman behind this this okay. strong incredible politician tell us about your childhood growing up in freiburg i uh, freiburg is still a very depressed city city in my mind a dorpy in real fact it's um it was difficult i we had one little community hall. It served as a dance venue, a recreational venue, a wedding venue. Um, that's where life in Freiburg was. Wow. But it was also a great town in the sense that our fathers and our mothers had resisted uh, forced removals from the town. And because of their resistance, the regime had then decided to develop a village into a place called Pudumo, where all the willing blacks went and those who were Hardenegach state put. It was a town. What does that mean? Hardenegach is the stubborn ones. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the nice thing about Freiburg is even though apartheid laws were strict and sought to divide the communities, it was very difficult because you jumped a street, you were in the colored area. You jumped another street, you were in the Indian area. And you walked across the stream, you were in the white area. So we, we got to intimately know the families. But it was also difficult because you could go to school up to the higher primary and then you had to ship out if you wanted to go to high school or university because there was that resistance and the state was saying no development in Freiburg. So I grew up in that small little dorpy. Mm, yeah. I had great people before me. Joe Murolong, his family was there and he was working there. Um, Meruth was a, mm. a, a hero then. We didn't know her. She was in exile already when I opened my eyes. So we had a strong and we still have a strong history of resistance in 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 Huhudi. music christmas is still i th still think freiburg has and the it best said christmas and you're a jazz lover as well yes <laughs> <laughs> so i mean one of the strong people in your life who shaped your thinking growing up um was not only your father franz mudisi who was an anc activist himself but also mm -hmm. your mother who you say molded you into the leader that you are today Yes, she was a strong woman. She at some point had to be left with six kids. But she was something I'm not. She was a true Christian. She, uh, But she taught... What are true Christians? <laughs> they prayed, they go to church. I hardly go to church. I believe that a, a good person does not need to be in church every Sunday. Mm. The life you lead every day must actually reflect the values of who you are. Absolutely. So it doesn't matter whether you are in this church or that church. For me, it is how you lead your life. Are you honest? Do you leave the talk? Do you teach your children to be honest? Are you hardworking? Uh, do you take a stand against corruption? Do you call thieves to order? Yes. Are you able to stand up in front of wrongdoers and say that cannot be done? That for me is the Christian. Absolutely. Wow. Well said. Um, so how and what drove you into politics? I mean, there, there's an incident uh, where you were walking down a street and you were shot at by police. And you say there was a huge paradigm shift in your life. I, I was at uh, Barolong High School. Um, and I think the week before the Soweto uprising started, there was an exchange between the students in Soweto and, and our high school. So when we heard about the police mowing down students marching, mm -hmm. 
we then organized a peaceful march thinking we are commemorating and uh, mourning for those of fellow students who had been shot down. We didn't know that in Mafiking, tiny town, that we the police would also come after us with bullets. Wow. And I got so angry because I thought it was within my right to stand up and march for the state that mows down its kids. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was also my right as a young student, a matriculant, to say this is the future I want. At the same time, Ndate Mangope was busy negotiating, lobbying Botswana-speaking people for what he wanted, his country called Botswana. And some of us were resisting because this way you were facing apartheid and this way it was being balkanized and we thought he is just complicating our lives. So, so we were resisting, those of us in Mafeking, one against the Bantu stand and then against the apartheid yes. and uh, Bantu education in particular. So I took a decision to join the students. And I think I may not have been ready to go into exile, but being shot at was just too much. So I decided to join Umkonto Wesizwe. So I know a lot of people joined MK because they want they joined the ANC because they wanted to join MK. That's me. Right, right. I had to fight. You were ready to fight. I had to fight. Absolutely. So the time is now twenty past one and if you've just joined us on Cape Talk, my name's Bonnie Mooley and in the um studio today we're joined by the Honorable Tandi Mudise, who sits as the chairperson of the National Council of Provinces and the deputy head of the AC Women's League. And earlier this year was appointed as a chancellor of CPUT. And also, she's just one amazing tough cookie. So please do call us if you have any questions. Um, you know our number. Um, tell us what your thoughts are. Tell us what's on your mind and what you'd like to know. So you then went to train. Yes, I did. Um, in a military camp, and you were the only woman there for a while. No, no, I wasn't. Um, I think that um, in a camp... Or you had the, the only woman with the senior rank. Yes, I think I was the first one to be given a rank in the military, but there were quite a few of us. Um, I think in a camp of uh, thousands, there were about 18 young women. That's how few... We were as women. But we did not forget we were women. Mm -hmm. We marked August 9 in that camp. We were always clear we did not come in to be ladies. We hated being called lady comrades. Uh, we came in as equals. And that was a demonstration and a challenge to the leadership of the Umkonto Esizo that we were capable of being commanders of being commissars, of being whatever rank they did. Yes. And it's good that uh, in later years you got your rank because you deserved it. Absolutely. Oh. So please do call us, ask us your questions, any comments that you might have. We love it when you join the conversation. Uh, give me a call on 021-446-0567 or SMS us at 31567. You can also tweet us at Cape Talk or send a text or voice message on WhatsApp on 072-567-1567. Now, Ma, let's get into your present role in politics in the ANC. And as a chairperson of the National Council of Province, one of the two houses of parliament, can you explain what the role of this house is and what distinguishes the NCOP from the National Assembly? The NCOP's uh, predecessor was called the Senate. If you remember the Senate, it used to be really for the administration of the provinces. Um, it, uh, the administrator decided who represented who, and black people were not. So when we came into parliament in 1994, um, the Senate had uh, changed a number of times from uh, something else until it represented... Uh, it was it had morphed into a tricameral structure. Uh, 
it did not suit our purposes because some way during the in the negotiations there was a strong feeling that uh, we needed a structure mm -hmm. which would not take the central government far from the ordinary person and that is why initially we had not even thought that we would need provinces when the provinces were thought of it was more about uh, federal states which could then be brought together under the umbrella of the national government so in in the negotiations we then had what we now have as the provinces in a unitary state but with very strong characteristics mm -hmm. of of federal federalism now when the Senate was then composed. It did not quite um, do what we thought it would do, represent the provinces at a national uh, 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 platform. And that is what the NC is all about. The NCOP brings together the provinces so that their matters can be discussed there. So what we do is we actually keep an eye on the finances, on the political mandates, of provinces mm -hmm. unlike the members of the national assembly we are not directly elected we are indirectly brought in because it is the provincial legislatures which second us into the the ncop and once we are there we actually concentrate on provincial mandates look for provincial interests because in terms of the constitution, we represent the interest of the provinces at the national state. We do get into legislation. We do want to prioritize provincial interest in the legislation. Right. We do. We are the only house in South Africa that represents um, organized local government. So at any given time, you've got all three spheres of government mm -hmm. in the NCOP unlike in the NA. Yeah. So many people, I mean, the, 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 the conversation on people's lips, and, and it's still going to be for or quite a while, is uh, yesterday's historical moment where President Jacob Zuma emerged victorious once again, surviving a motion of no confidence in Parliament. What are your thoughts on that? Some of our um, listeners would also love to know that. They'd love to just hear your opinions on that and what you think uh, really stood out yesterday for you as, and also for all of us as a country going forward, I whether think positive or negative. I think we are a democracy in transition. And I think we should say that democracy triumphed yesterday. Now, it can't be wrong to allow members, especially after what the Constitutional Court said, to allow members to have the secret ballot. If you remember, the arguments of the court was that at the instance of the election of an incoming head of state, you go for the secret ballot. And therefore, at the time when you need to take this person out, who has now enjoyed and exercised influence, it surely must mean that you must consider secret ballot. And I think that is what the speaker did. I don't want to look at it as somebody triumphing. I think we should say that South Africa struggled yet another mm -hmm. milestone. And I think that what we should be wary of is not to label members who voted. I think ultimately we should go back as South Africa to say what does a public representative mean, even in our electoral system. Yes, it is the party that is elected. Yes, we stand by what the party tells us. But yes, we are also not robots. Mm -hmm. And if a member feels strongly, that is why there is an abstain button. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if members were supposed to be just robot, it would be zero and one. Right. And that's how we would be on automation. So I think that I would say that yesterday was another milestone in our democracy. It's good. For me, as a presiding officer, it is good that the speaker allowed for the secret ballot. Absolutely. It is also for the ANC itself. It is good to know that 
it can rely on the majority of its members. Mm -hmm. It is also good for the ANC to then go and say, why did we have dissent? Is there anything in terms of the internal democratic uh, 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 processes of the ANC that we are not doing right? What can you? So I'm saying can that the ANC really do that? Are they capable of doing that? Because that, I feel like at this stage, people feel like the, the ANC protecting the ANC is paramount versus protecting the country. The ANC was established to fight on behalf of the people of South Africa. It, it was not established to fight for itself. Mm -hmm. And so in whatever we do as public representatives of South Africa, we've got to be listening, we've got to be watching, we've got to be talking on behalf of the people. And that is why it is always important for the ANC to listen to what the people say and not to hear only what it wants to hear. And that is the lesson in democracy. So I think that the ANC is capable. Uh, we might be going through some reactions. Mm -hmm. And it is, you know, life has ups and downs. The ANC, over since it was uh, established in 2012, has had its highs and lows. Yeah. It might be one of our lows. But definitely I would not count out the ANC. It will write itself. Wow. And just one last question in closing. One of our um, um, listeners has asked, they just feel that the ANC Women's League is sending out lukewarm statements about the scourge of violence against women and children. And not that it's actually escalated recently. It's always been like this. It's just that now people have platforms to talk about it and to talk about it as much as they want to. Bunny, I used to be the deputy president of the Women's League. I, um, in my heart, I'm still a member. Mm. I am not active in the ANC Women's League. But the ANC Women's League um, must be at the forefront of mobilizing and advocating for gender equity in South Africa. Yeah. It must talk. It must actually teach. It must be there in your face about gender relations. It must assert the right of young girls mm -hmm. and women. Mm -hmm. And therefore, it cannot be found wanting. In the past, the Women's League would be the glue that brought together all the other organizations. Right. It must be part of civil society because what happens in the private home cannot always be policed. And that is why domestic violence is on the rise because you can't police everything. Mm -hmm. So. What you need to do is how do you bring up your children, both all genders? How do you entrench good behavior in public? And yes. it means you leave right so that the children who are looking at you know this is the right way. It means you preach what you Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're going to return to this conversation shortly. It's now um, one thirty-two on Cape Talk, and we're going to take a le look at the latest news updates with Amy McIver. Cape Talk. Cape Talk. Call us on o two one double four six o five six seven. It's now one thirty-six on Cape Talk, and we're still delighted to welcome a renowned politician with strong struggle credentials to our Cape Talk studios today. She's been in a hot seat for the past thirty minutes, and that's Metandi Mudise. And we're talking about women and children, and 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 the plight that they're under in South Africa at the moment, and and how the public feels there's a deafening silence from from female leadership. Um, what are your thoughts, Mayor, on the recent events at Cubana where um, Mr. Duduzi um, Manana is um, allegedly beat up a woman? Well, absolutely disgusted. I think it is unacceptable that any member of the executive raises a hand mm -hmm. to clap any citizen. It doesn't matter what the provocation is. He was completely out of order. And I hope that some action will be taken. I'm not saying that the public has a right to insult members of the executive or politicians. Yeah. I'm simply saying, with us public representatives, it goes with the job. We absorb a lot of things, stories we framed up, we told, but you are a public representative. You must be exemplary. And I think when you are a member of the ANC, it is even more 
even more so your responsibility to behave. Domestic violence cannot be allowed to get out. Violence against women in whatever space cannot be tolerated. Mm. And so in the strongest term, having also seen the footage which went viral in the social yes. media, I think that I am not at all happy with the Deputy Minister. Yeah. He should unreservedly apologize not only to his victim, but to South Africa. Now, abuse comes in many forms. And what would your word of advice be to young women in an, in an abusive situation? I ask you because back in 95, there was a Mail and Guardian report alleging that you were not allowed to make phone calls from your own home for then you needed permission from your husband. Well, in any abusive situation, I think girls, women walk out. It's not worth it. No man who loves you will abuse you or denigrate you. If anybody loves you, they will treasure you. You will treasure them. They will not try to change you. You must not try to change them. So I think my advice is always to young women, negotiate your relationships. Hmm. Walk out if it doesn't work. There are too many men out there smart enough, men enough mm -hmm. to accommodate strong women but it cannot be that in 2017 women still stay in relationships that don't work for them simply because they are expected to be part or in an annex to a man absolutely well we've got a call coming in from gertie from Colt bay hello gertie welcome to cape talk thank you good afternoon I just want to make a point about the women's group. I think they are the worst example of how women should behave. They have done absolutely nothing for women in South Africa other than um, the uh, Mr. Zuma supporter. That's my point. Thank you. This is a hot issue, and we can't get away from it, and I think we're going to need to just flesh it out and keep talking about it. And I, that's that's the message that the public is is hearing. We're hearing Begazela, just hang on in there. We we're more protective of the men in the ANC than we are of of the women of South Africa. No, we should not. And I think I know that in the nineties, when the negotiations were on, that we once actually went almost um, to this point where we were asking some of us young women then in the women's league. What we would do if we were part of a government of the ANC and there were policies or things that happened to women which we did not agree with. Mm. And at that time, we were not at one because some of us said we are women first. The Women's League is not established solely to protect members of the ANC. It talks about protecting, promoting the rights of women, not ANC women. And therefore, the Women's League should really go back, if it has faltered, it should go back to reassessing why there is a public perception that we are not doing what we should be doing. Mm -hmm. We are, maybe you might even say self-appointed, voices an eyes of South African women coordinating with all the other women structures in the world, we should actually go back and say, why is it that we are losing it mm -hmm. in the public? If we are doing right things, then I would encourage the leaders of the ANC Women's League to come up and convince the public that, in fact, we have not lost it. We are doing what we should do. Protection of the people protection of the people has always been the mantra that has kept us going, some of us, when we joined the ANC. The ANC has never said protect the leader. It has always said the people. Hmm. And therefore some of us live with the hope that we will always remember that we are servants of the people. Oh. That the protection goes to the people. The defense goes to the people. Which means that that is the only way the ANC continues.
to be relevant in the eyes of the people and continues to be the leader of society. Because when you fail to do what is right, the protection of the people, the defender of the people's rights, the educator of the people, then you lose that position. Wow. Thank you so much for blessing us with your time today. Thank you very and, much. And uh, again, a happy Women's Day. And thank you for being frank and, and actually answering the questions <laughs> that we had for you today. Thank you very much.